So you can be showing the kids something that's like static and they change, you know, the content and everything's the same. It can look different. Like how we saw that frame there. Mm -hmm. It can look another day because they constantly update it. Mm -hmm. So oh, yeah. you just have to be prepared to be flexible when they say, oh, my screen doesn't look like your screen or something like that. Yeah. A lot of, uh, Let me see. Or, or especially I'm sure if you're using like a uh, iPad or a tablet versus a computer or a mobile device, it's probably gonna look different as well, right? Yeah. Yeah, it, yeah, that was the issue. Like once it took them a while to see where things were located. Um, so that 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 was an issue in the beginning. But once they got a hang, um, for me, I'm going to show you where I got confused. And this is important. You're going to have the same issue. Um, and then I'm just going to scroll through real quick. Uh, what do you want to do today? So they went through the whole steps. This You're not is sharing your screen, right? Oh. Hold on a second here. Here. Okay, perfect. Um, okay, yeah, and then you know the same thing. So you have the document. What kind of business? The corporation. Um, you know, some of these they don't have to do. They can skip it. So I had them skip some of these. What do you want to set up next? They can skip. You know, what, just get them through the process to set up because you can always go back and add these features, set these features up. Mm -hmm. So I had them just went through, just let's just go through, just keep pushing, keep pushing. Accept online payment. Nope, don't do anything here. Just keep going. And then they went through the next, ready for the free trial of QuickBooks payroll. And then they set up and then they get this notification mm -hmm. that they're good. Do they say yes or maybe which one? Can you go back to 12? Yeah, which one they click here? They can, okay, well, we make it easy to pay for employees, a contractor, or file payroll taxes. Yeah, I put maybe. Okay. Because they don't know yet. Okay. And then they send, then this is where they get in. Okay. And it's, it, which is kind of cool. I, I had my kids take notes inside the field. So they would go in, they kind of took their time and went through and read how things are located, how it works. And it gives you a guide that you can go to. So let me, let me switch overview now. Okay, so this is the email you're gonna get when you, when you reply. Mm -hmm. So this email, they sent me this email here um, how to set it up. Um, you can also find tutorials. It's, they had a good, it's a lot of good resource here. Click on that. They have all kind of stuff here um, within the resource center. And you can get a lot of cool things in this area. And then this is the link that the students will click to sign up. So when I click this, That's the link that you have where you where you have to act. This is not for the student. This is for you to sign your kids up. Okay, and that, that's in the chat. Scroll down. And that's it. So what I did, I kind of went directly and emailed them. I just sent the email because I was a little confused in the beginning and, um, and requested. And then they sent you out a form, the Excel sheet. And then that's where you enter your kids' information. Here's another one here, same thing. Okay, so now once we got that done, I'm able to jump right into, let me see, where is it? Okay, so this is a site. I'm gonna copy that link and put that in the chat so you have that. Can you see my screen? Yeah. Okay. 
Okay, I'm gonna send that in the chat in a minute. So once I log, I set up an account here as an educate the education account, and that's the link that I use to get to it. Sign in. Okay. Now, once once I sign in, I'm like the actual. I am there. The, I'm like the main person, like the actual auditor for their account. Mm -hmm. So I have access. Once you log in and the kids kick that link, they all going to come inside the, the account here. So at first I was like, how do I get to see the kids work? How do I get to see their side? So right here, you see this? Mm -hmm. You have to click that little icon and now I'm inside of a student's portfolio or company, okay? To get back, it gets tricky. So I'm like, click right here and I'm gonna go back to practice. Okay. And so what I had my kids do was just explore. So this is, um, he has a financial service business. So he was able to upload his logo right here so you can get them to start customizing their look um they add a logo in here um and what's cool it walks them through the steps very simple very easy and what i would do is spend one day hey guys we're going to do this together let's take a look create and send our first invoice let's do this together you click on this and now they can actually create their invoice straight from scratch See, and it walks them through. This is good. So what I would do is have them, slow is always good. I have them just take their time. We have five, five sections to go through. Next, see, it tells you along the way, online payment, which is perfect. Add a product service. I will have a kid, one of my kids will read this out together. Customize your invoice. See the other templates option. Help when you need it right here in the tour. And then they can start. Okay. And real simple, just like, you know, you just add your customer's name. Okay. Just, they will go through the process. And what I would do is have them do, I would set up a dummy name that they have to follow. So that every kid is that's doing it. When you can look at another kid's, but when you go in, you know that, okay, he did put Johnny's name in the right spot. He did know it was $300 that he needs to go here. The email, it could be a fake business that you can give them. Bill and address, 30 day net. And this is all, when you go through this, you're actually teaching them this whole thing, which is good. Invoice date, due date. This is pretty cool. You can tag the invoice, which like, you, like, you know, when you do a search, you can have special key tags for certain business. Maybe this business is about uh, lawn service business. So they can tag this invoice. So when you do a quick search, that will pull up. Uh, let's see. Items, they will start the service date. They can add a new product, which is cool. And it walks them through it. Turn on inventory tracking non-inventory service bundle. So let's say, let's say it's a service and look what happens. It just gives them, you give them, what is a service? Maybe a haircut. Okay. okay. Haircut, then you could put a skew. A skew is optional. You know, a skew could be like a barcode. You can put an image up there. Category is always important when you do your invoicing. Maybe this is about, um, um, fade, a haircut that is a fade. It's a, speci a specific haircut. Um, description of the, the product. Sales, income, this is always important. Is this cost of goods? Expense, is it for the car, is it a contractor? You, you know, which is cool. This is nice. So you're actually, which is cool, when you go through this, you're teaching a whole lot just by just doing this particular section. That's pretty good. And then I, bam, you check. 
purchasing information and you save and close. And then, you know, you can save your template. Okay, we can add something else. Okay, let's say you have to add shipping on this or give them a discount. You can do some changes within the piece right here. Okay, I'm gonna close this. X takes me back to here. Finish up your payment setup. Track and invoice and get paid. And they can walk through the steps. Notice that it gives them these steps of how to set it up, which is cool. Connecting your bank account. I don't have my kids do this part because they don't really have that set up yet. Paying employees, just you can just walk them through this section, but they don't have to do this. See, you it's it gets a little more complicated, but yeah. See, you can just do the trial, but that's when the paid employee gets a little tough. I don't I don't I don't mess with that. Okay, this is good. Start tracking time. You know, this is cool. QuickBooks, Chris, I've been using this QuickBooks feature where when you, it's a GPS in it. So when you leave your house, you click, you click a button and it tracks you for your miles and it calculates your miles to your destination. And you don't have to, you don't have to enter it manually. It just follows you like a video game. And then just like, it mm -hmm. says, hey, you get your destination. It, it gives you the total, um, total miles and it gives you the calculation too. Nice. It's really nice. It's in the mobile device. I have it on the mobile one. It's good. Uh, stay connected with your accountant. This is important. I had my kids email me. And when you get to this part, have them put your email in. Your account is now, see, I'm already connected. So your kids need to connect you as the accountant. Mm. You see? So when you go back, you'd be like their main, you have access to their books at all times. So this this right here allows the te is this the only part that allows the teacher to see all their students in one snapshot? No, them being the accountant or yes, yeah they they can jump in and out they can add they can edit they can do what they have to do in there. So you can see the students' pr progression because you're their accountant. Yeah, like I'm in a student account right now because I'm the accountant for Jason C. Okay. Uh, so I'm in this back end. So, Mr. Paris, when they come in, they 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 create their own name for their business. Yes, I have them create their own name for the business and put their names in parentheses in the back, so I can see the name and the business together. Got it. <clears throat> reports is going to be a good one. I noticed a lot of that on the test. What, what kind of reports to pull? Uh, PL, uh, profit and loss, balance sheet. So you just walk through these with them. But this is where they can find it. And each one of these, when they work, even if they don't have a mobile, they can do this on their phone, on their tablet, which is good. Okay. Set up taxes. To, you know. Miles, here it is, Chris. Beautiful mile tracker. This is good for accounting. Yeah. In order to have that, you got to have um, QuickBooks yeah. on your computer. Yeah, I have, no, you can have it. I download QuickBooks on my um, my mobile device. Mm -hmm. So I can actually do most of this on my phone yeah. without even going to a computer. It's so convenient. A person might call, hey, Paris, I need an invoice. So Ray, the software, the students could also access it on their mobile device, correct? Correct, yes. Mm -hmm. Which is cool. And then accountant of charts, we can. And then my accountant, see, I'm the accountant here. So you get to see my information, okay? So now to get back to the students, I would just go back, back to practice. Got it. And it's, it's, it's not bad. You get to see all your kids in here. You can give feedback, you know, you can make interactive, you can do whatever you wanna do with these kids' accounts. Now, what my recommendation would, this is what I, if I, this is what I'm doing. I'm going to create a client. I'm going to build a scenario. This client needs to purchase this amount of t-shirt from this company located here. 
um, you need to put the sales tax of 7%. Um, you need to create an invoice that has a 15 day net. So they get to understand where to find those key things. 15, 30 day net. Um, and they create the scenario and just have it on a sheet and that'll be their test. Mm. So when they come in, okay, how do you modify, for example, let me go here. So the tests, each one of these, like for example, invoicing alone, maybe they may have to create an estimate for, for a job. How do you add a bill? Okay, so they might have to add a bill. Maybe the bill might be the internet service of $300. Maybe they have to do two bills that's pertaining to the business, a dummy business that you're gonna create for them. Um, but this is, this is um, it's pretty good, it's pretty good, pretty good. Let me see, COVID, okay. How do you see tracking again? And all the other, like the technical stuff, like the vocab and technical stuff, you can cover that with, you know, with your quick, with your G metrics, you can cover that with your books that you do in class, but this will give them physical hands-on right. to do the test. Right. You know, but I think this is not, it's not that hard when you look compared to the desktop version. Oh, okay. It just seems more like it's right in your face. You just got to click on it, know where to find <clears> it. <throat> and you can go in and make the adjustments right away, you know? Hey, hey Ray, um, today also, can you just give a quick snapshot again? Remember with the curriculum where the teachers can access the curriculum itself? And then also where they can find those videos to help them guide them through the, the program. Okay. I have a quick question. The um, certification exam that the students will be taking, will it be from the, the simulation portion of it? Will it be the online or the desktop simulation? It's, do you? Right now it's both, but you okay. have to select which one you want. That's why I was asking. Oh, okay. Oh, we're going to be dealing with because right now if you go into CertiPort now CertiPort mm -hmm. gives you an option to do either desktop or online okay okay and the, um, so once again you know based on what you guys have been teaching thus far whether it's been desktop or or online but the alignment from nifty stuff all that curriculum is, is focusing on the online stuff okay. um, but I know a lot of you were, have been teaching desktop <sighs> The one, the one main thing is that with the online, we, we looked at that because that's, you know, that's what tomorrow is going to be offering, right? Mm -hmm. you know, disregarding COVID, online is the way to go because you can access it from your mobile device, anywhere you go, and don't have to worry about going back to your office to be able to access your books. Um, so we found that the online version is, is, is going to be very beneficial to students down the line. But one of the key features is we also have access to all the tutorial videos that, um, you know, majority of teachers don't actually have access to. So QuickBooks gave us um, some quick links and some videos that you guys can actually use in your classroom with your students. Um, that can be very beneficial. And if there's anything that you ever have like questions around directly with Intuit, we have their direct contact. So you can email myself, Ray, and then we'll copy um, the Intuit folks and team on that email, and they'll have somebody directly troubleshoot the issues with you guys. Was right there, and he said, it? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Hey, Quinn, I'm on a Zoom. Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh, I tell you. Okay. Cool. All right. So, so in this document here, what I did, I kind of I'm actually doing this with my startup tech kids. So I kind of flipped the script with, on the lesson, but we have access to this. 
but inside the document, you actually have video links that gives you all the information on QuickBooks. So mm -hmm. let's say you're going over the online setup. You have all Welcome the um, chapter one. the guides Using here. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to put the channel in here. So you have the whole channel. See, it has everything mm. you need. Mm. So I'm going to copy this, but you still have this document. And this document is located in the Canvas. Chris, do they have, I don't know if they have access to Canvas. Yes, camp, they all have access to Canvas and okay. document is, a, it's actually, once you get into, I want to say unit one point something or two, you're going to start seeing the QuickBooks lessons already embedded in E1. But you can also go to your teacher hub and download the whole um, uh, alignment as a PDF right underneath the teacher hub, underneath instructional resources at the very bottom. And so if you don't, if you don't want to wait to each lesson to see what's next with the alignment, you could actually jump right to the complete doc and download it and utilize that. Can you show us now? Yeah. Like now this. that we've entered our opening balances, we and need... this is nice too. What I do is have not sharing. Yeah. Can you... Test and one two. Yeah, you, you're good, but your, your document's not on. There you oh, go. There it is. So what I did, I mean, I'm going to be honest with you. This information here that they put together, this is like, they, you can run your whole program with the videos. Like, you, can, you know, it just goes in depth and it shows you exactly where to go and find things. I realize maybe that's not so easy after all. You could record each transaction individually through the new menu. Just be sure to enter them in the correct date order. So that way you don't end up taking a customer's payment before you entered their invoice. You might run into some problems. Also, you have two other options. The first option is to speak with your accountant about creating journal entries that would summarize all of the transactions that have happened this year. Mm -hmm. They could design a single journal entry that summarizes all of the transactions from the beginning of the year till today, or a series of journal entries is to download all of your transactions from the beginning of the year. So he has so much information here that I, the link is in there, but it just goes on. It just, I mean, even goes into the, the we just went over invoicing, I think. In some cases, you may need to give a customer a credit towards future purchases. Or maybe if they currently have a balance, you want to decrease the balance that they currently owe. Let's look at an example of this by going to invoicing, customers. Scroll all the way down to find our customer, Weisskopf Consulting. Now we can see that Weisskopf Consulting currently owes us money. That's their accounts receivable balance at the moment. Click on their name to see the individual transactions that make up the balance. Here we can see invoice number 46 for $375. Click on that invoice to see more details about it. In the products and services area, you can see that we charged Weisskopf Consulting $375 for five hours of design at $75 an hour. Now, as it turns out, Weisskopf Consulting is not very happy with the work that we did on this design and they've asked for us to lower their balance. Right now, they owe $375 on this invoice. They want to bring that down. Hmm. So you see, I mean, it's in depth. Uh, I like it because I'm learning about it too, which is, you know, I'm, I learn things and I apply to my, um, my actual um, software of QuickBooks that I'm using. So this is, it's, it's a good thing. Right, um, let, me, let me show them really quick where to find it on- um... Go ahead. So you want to share screen? Canvas, share. Okay. So once you go to your dashboard in Canvas, first thing you're going to do is click on the E1 Teacher Hub. <clears throat> you're going to go to Instructional Resources. Scroll down just about midway through. And you're going to find 
right here, regional certification exams, QuickBook lessons. So you click on that and then you download the PDF and it's the, the, the doc that Ray was just showing with all the, the, align, the whole alignment between Nifty and QuickBooks. So that's where you get that at. But I also wanna show you guys how you see it throughout the actual curriculum. So if I'm not mistaken, once you go to teach your home page, I want to say it starts in unit one, maybe week four. Let's see. Yep. Intuit design thinking. Um, yes. So we see right here, it automatically will start. It will show you where it mm -hmm. parts of the, the curriculum actually aligns with our curriculum. So you won't see it in every single section, but as you teach in that you can just click here, go to Intuit um, lesson plan, and it brings it right up. Nice. And then if you go, let's, let's get out of this and go to unit two. Um, let's see. Let me see if they have it here. See it right here. Once again, you have it right down here on the bottom. So it goes to the Intuit QuickBooks um, toolkit. And then you click on it and it takes you to the activity again. So it, it kind of paces itself throughout the curriculum and you have it automatically embedded. But um, not all the teachers use Canvas for what it's worth. Um, I, I, I recommend all teachers getting comfortable with it because it's a great place to, uh, to work with your students as a one-stop shop. But um, a lot of our teachers take the stuff out of Canvas and add it to their online platform, whether it's Google Classroom, Classcraft, um, OneNote, whatever works for you guys. Um, so, you know, that's that. And then once again, don't forget our virtual office hours, Tuesday through Thursday, 9.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. You probably get those emails. It's not that you have to be on, but it's, you know, as a link for you guys as your, as your lifeline, pretty much, to ask any questions and connect with us. Mr. McBride came and jammed with us on the Nifty radio station today. You know, sometimes we turn it into the nifty radio station when Mr. McBride was there and he just so happened to click the wrong link. You know, all those Zoom meetings he had today, but um, he ended up in the right spot and he, he jammed out with us for a little bit. But all right, Ray, anything now, else you want to I'll be back add? tomorrow. On, I'll be back Thursday on purpose. All right, that's good. That's good. You know, we're there for you. I mean, Chris, I think, I think, um, this I think this this is enough information to get started. I think um, if they need any help, they can always reach out. But I think that's enough. I think we're on time with the. Okay. The so what we here. what we do is the next steps. Um, if you can tell me how many, if you guys can email me how many Nifty students you have in your um, in the QuickBooks alignment class, let me know. Right now, we can guarantee you twenty five vouchers for your student. But um, due to, I think we're gonna have a few, a lot fewer teachers than I thought. So we might be able to give you guys more because we have a total, I think it's 225 or 200 vouchers for, for students. So if you need more than that, we can, we can work it out. All right. And once again, please, um, I know a lot of you getting started. So do the, the pre's and then the post in May. Um, so we can turn that into Nifty so they can do a study to see how the students, you know, reacted to the um, to the QuickBooks and Nifty program, and we, we'll take it from there. Okay, I went ahead and put the QuickBooks um the PowerPoint in the slide deck, and the links and everything's in there. So just copy, they can copy those. I think I sent it to you, Chris, but um, I don't know if everybody got it. Oh yeah, so Ray put it in the chat. So Ray, yeah, if you can send me that, that'll be perfect because what I'll do is I'll then take your email and send it out to all of the, the teachers that's part of this program. So whatever whatever instructions you can provide in an email format, that'd be, that'd be actually perfect. Okay. But um, once again, if you guys have any questions, let us know. And um, we'll probably end it right about here. Ready, you probably could stop recording. So that